Good evening. Uh, we waited a little longer because there are still people coming in. I guess people come out of work, also professionals in the field. I, I know quite a few people here, so I'm very glad. Uh, thank you for coming to the new school. My name is Fabio Parasecoli, and I'm the director of the Food Studies program here. I'll just say a few words about what we do and why we decided to have this event here. So the Food Studies program uh, is now um, an undergraduate program that offers associate degree, bachelor's, and uh, more interestingly, uh, many of our classes are actually open to the public, uh, keeping in the tradition of the new school. People who are interested in, in specific topics can come and take classes, so please make sure if you're interested to leave your name at the entrance and we'll get in touch with you. We're developing all kinds of things. There is a lot of interest about food and wine, so we're working at the graduate level to create certificates. And uh, we'll open a program in Paris. We have now a school in Paris called Parsons Paris. That one's hopefully uh, gonna open soon. Um, we try to stay in contact with, with the public, with the city of New York, so we uh, organize many of these events uh, during the year. I'd, I'd just like to announce that on April 10th and 11th, we're gonna have a two-day conference on food in New York City here at the New School. And you're, of course, all invited. And we also have a website called The Inquisitive Eater, inquisitiveeater.com, where we welcome submissions from anybody. So if you have you know, photos or paintings or poems that you've written, we're more than welcome to accept submissions. So when I started talking about this opportunity, we were really, really interesting because one of the concentrations in our uh, bachelor's program is precisely about health and the environment. So talking about sustainability in the wine industry, it's perfect for, uh, for what we do. And it was a great opportunity to share uh, with the US public what's going on in Italy. And we hope to create a dialogue and a conversation. So we have uh, two representatives from Italy. We have uh, Professor Lorenzo Zanni, who is a professor of business management at the University of Siena. And we have Michele Manelli, who's uh, chairman and CEO founder of the Forum for Wine Sustainability, and I'll say a little more about that. Uh, he's also um, a, the uh, owner of uh, Salcedo, which is one of the wines that will be offered. Um, then for the US side, we have Bruce Schneider, who used to produce wine, and now he works on the Gotham Project. He will tell us more about that. And we are Tyler Coleman, so known as Dr. Vino, uh, from his uh, website and blog. Tyler also teaches for us here at the new school. We're very happy to have him on board for, for the program. So th the, the occasion of this event, as Lorenzo will explain, is the presentation of the first report on sustainable wine growing. Uh, it's the result of work between uh, universities and the private sector. It's very interesting and they'll tell you more about that. It's the beginning of a model of collaboration between private and public within the EU that we hope will bring you know, to general standards uh, down the line in the future for wine sustainability. Uh, the report has been already presented in Italy and this is the first time it's presented outside of Italy, so we're very honored that they chose uh, the new school to do this. And uh, th the evening will uh, start with a presentation uh, from Professor Zanni, who will explain the content of the uh, first report, and then uh, the information will be also integrated by Michele Manelli. And then we'll have uh, presentations also from uh, uh, Bruce Schneider and Tyler Coleman about you know the point of view of the US and then we'll start a conversation that we will then open to the public and after that as you can see there will be a reception with wine and and food so we invite you to stay until until the end so I would invite Lorenzo uh, Zanni to give his presentation
Thank you, Fabio. Thank you to all for, for your attention. So in reality, I'm the guest speaker, but in reality, this report has been written by three different university and different researchers. And um, they asked me two things. First, not to be too much academic, so we, you, I will not speak about econometric model. And uh, don't speak too, too, too much, uh, so at maximum 20 minutes. So I will just briefly go some data and the results of the, of the report, and just to give you some idea to discuss together. Hmm? So what is the agenda? Explain something um, briefly. What is the forum? Uh, what, what were the main goal of the report? And then mm, the report is divided in three parts. So the first part gives some data on the economic features of the uh, sustainability and wine, which is the, is the first report has, done, has been done in Italy. Then mm, there are some data regarding the Italian programs and indicators how to measure sustainability. And the third part, I was the author of this third part, regarding the business model and uh, the value creation, which is more oriented on economic performance and how sustainability has changed the business model of the Italian wineries. So uh, first, we begin with the forum. The forum is a group of people, we say is a place. Uh, was created by Michele, one is one of the founders, um, uh, Marco Sabellico uh, of Gambero Rosso, and, uh, and by the Union Italiana Vini, uh, Italian Wine Union, uh, uh, by Attilio Scienza, uh, with the aim of promoting uh, sustainability. And the goal are, the main goal are three. First of all is uh, to communicate, uh, mainly internal, uh, and uh, even to external, so to have you know, an identity. Uh, because many people work on sustainability, but in general, uh, there was not a place where to discuss. The second, at scientific level, to begin to study you know, more systematically the topic of sustainability. And the third one, uh, to, to discuss uh, operational and uh, management best practice. So, the report is divided uh, in, uh, in three parts. Uh, the people involved in reality are 36 experts divided in two groups. One group is more on technical problem, on wineries, engineering. Another group are ma mainly in economic and marketing aspects. So uh, I'm a member of, for example, of this second group. Uh, uh, this working group uh, defined some uh, topic of research that could be investigated in the first report. And um, the topic analyzed in this first report are the economic features of uh, a decovered movement that was analyzed by the University of Naples, Pomarici and Vecchio. Uh, the second um, topic is that the synoptic framework of the Italian sustainable development, the indicators, how to measure sustainability by the Italian standard, and was developed by Men Mencarelli and the Propres by University of Tusha. And then the strategic orientation uh, and the sustainability strategy uh, that I was the coordinator of this research and uh, uh, made by University of Siena. So uh, just to go briefly, in, uh, in the first part, uh, one of the main goals was uh, what type of definition you, know, you have of sustainability. In this case, nothing new uh, in the sense that uh, we have interviewed more than 1,000 firms in Italy regarding a definition of sustainability and uh, the, the type of definition that they gave was quite coherent in what is the, uh, the literature on this. Uh, the only thing is that mm, uh, uh, the aspect that they, they stress regarding sustainability are a bit different in the level of intensity. Let's say uh, in other countries you stress more uh, some variable. In Italy we stress different variable. We see later and maybe I let mm, Michele to discuss better this topic. Uh, the importance. How is important sustainability in the, the wine uh, in the wine industry? Uh, our estimate uh, say that company directly involved in specific sustainability development uh, networks represent at least one third of the gross domestic product. So let's say uh, around three billion of uh, turnover, around uh, 500 wineries. Uh, at the moment, the 31 universities are involved and research center and 10 association of uh, or government institution, uh, which is uh, uh, 
if we consider that in Italy we begin to speak you know, uh, on sustainability in wine, at least 10 years ago, more, uh, something um, very important has been done in the last, uh, in the last period. Uh, the report doesn't analyze the consumer, but you know, uh, the colleague Poramarici analyzed some research done on the consumer. So I just sum up some, uh, you know, some character of the consumer that in Italy, the consumer is starting to show clear expectation on uh, concerning environmental and social issue. But sometimes they are a bit confused. They are still uncertain regarding uh, uh, the, uh, how to measure the, 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 the sustainability approach of a firm and uh, even uncertain about how premium they recognize on sustainability. So, there is interest, but there, there is uncertainty how to measure and uh, what is the premium price, for example, to give to sustainability. Uh, at the same time, consumers in Italy are more indulgent regarding the potential environment impact of, of, of wine than other agriculture and food products. Let's say in, they are more, you know, we love wine a lot, so uh, sometimes uh, we, we don't care what is under, behind this product. But mm, this uh, we consider uh, is, uh, is the past because uh, what we are seeing, for example, for olive, for other food products uh, is beginning to change even in the wine industry. Uh, so the legal framework, uh, very complex. You know, the, the legal uh, uh, framework in Italy is always complex, but the main problem is that we don't have a specific law regarding the wine sector. So all the um, guidelines on environmental sustainability are, are taken by you know, at, or general rules. The only one is the uh, OIVU resolution, which regards the greenhouse gas inventories. Uh, in reality, in Italy, there are 15 programs uh, that speak about sustainable development in the wine sector. But mm, most of them are, um, are made by region or wine uh, association. And so in this case, uh, there is a concrete need to organize brand norms that comes from different region and different uh, organization. Uh, the indicators, mm, uh, a colleague has analyzed the different indicators that uh, you know, were used in these 15 different laws so what they have in common, in general, the three main indicators are uh, GHG emission of greenhouse gases, water consumption, and the third one is biodiversity maintenance and protection. Uh, this, this, this third one, I, I, I hope we have the opportunity to debate this, is a macro indicator on biodiversity and uh, the interviews of the, f of the wineries uh, reveal that this is very important for the Italian wineries. And it's quite, you know, in terms of variable, how, how to measure uh, is a bit different from what we have shown in different analyses in other countries. So uh, I just give you some data. Uh, I hope you can read. <laughs> mm, nah. uh, OK, just to. Uh, uh, to say what are the main indicators that the wineries stress. Uh, the first is, uh, for example, is to de defend the typicity of the rural area that they, uh, they, they are. The second, uh, obviously, is um, the reduction of minimization of the use of uh, synthetic fertilizer, and this is quite common. But the third is protection of the landscape. Just to give you an example, there is a new law now, now in, uh, in Tuscany, and there is a big debate because most of the winery already are doing this, but the region wants to stress more the attention, and that you cannot enlarge the business, you cannot modify the, the landscape because the landscape is part of the business. So we have to defend the cypress, we have to defend the forest, and you cannot enlarge too much the wineries. So uh, the the um, one, the protection of the landscape is one of the main goals stressed by, by the, the wineries. Then you have traceability, which is uh, quite common. And then respect and protection of biodiversity in the countryside. In this case, 
They are speaking about land and ecosystem. So uh, if you say the point rating, the, the standard point is between zero to five, you can have a different mark. Let's say most of these indicators are quite high, but the main are, you know, are connected to the topic of the biodiversity. I will let Michele to speak more about this. Uh, I go immediately in the third part of, the, so now about the business model and the, the value creation approach, so the strategy that the firm uh, have, uh, have adopted. So consider this, we have more than 1,000 interview. The firms that uh, have been interviewed are all through Italy. Uh, what is the business model? Uh, we want to analyze how sustainability has changed the business model of the firm. What is a business model? You know, is the um, a systemic representation that involves the strategy, the technology, and the organization. And we want to see how sustainability has changed the business model and how the business model has influenced the performance of the firms in terms of economic value, social value, and uh, uh, environmental value. So the, the interview uh, were done uh, by a, a sample of a around 5,000 Italian firms with a questionnaire. Uh, so the um, 1,000 uh, questionnaire valid are in the 20% of the response rate, which is quite good in the, uh, in the, which means that most of the wineries want to participate to the uh, research. Thanks to Gambero Rosso, too, you must admit. Uh, what are the characters of the, of the sample? You know, in Italy, most of our firm are micro firms, small firms. So we have more than 75% micro firms. Uh, then uh, only a few numbers are medium or large enterprise. This is not new. Italy is full of micro firms. Uh, this is our history and, uh, you know, uh, you cannot found large corporation, multinational corporation in wineries. But the, the geographical distribution is quite, uh, you know, homogeneous in the sense that we have firms of uh, north, center, and uh, south of Italy. For example, we have very good results in terms of sustainability even in the south of Italy. So in this case, we cannot say that the wineries in the south are, uh, you know, in delay by comparison to the rest of it. Um, Okay, I just go. Be, I have only 20 minutes, and I have to respect, you know, the order that they gave me. Uh, first results. Mm, uh, if it, what the firm said about the importance of sustainability, more than 80 percent considered this one of the main driver of company development, which is a large number of the firm now sustainability is in the center of the debate of the Italian wineries. That if you consider that this movement begins 10 years ago it's a very good result in the sense uh, that how they gave importance. Um, in terms of um, type of action, there are different strategic uh, options regarding uh, both cost leadership, they use sustainability to reduce the cost, and other strategy, they use sustainability to differentiate the product and the production. Uh, in terms of communication, uh, in general, they. Uh, work very well in the communication in the value chain, but uh, you know, uh, downstream, in the sense they work uh, in distribution and uh, to, to communicate sustainability to the client, less uh, on uh, you know alongside the supply chain and even uh, you with the supplier less. Um, just I know that maybe you don't see, but the type of investment that they have done. Uh, I, the most of their, of their investment has been done on the product and on the process. If you see uh, the uh, investment in the, the certification hmm, and uh, some uh, uh, investment in the environmental reduction, for example, biomass, uh, is less important. Uh, so uh, the type of investment, the average uh, mark is quite high. So. But the, in Italy, they prefer to work on the product and on the process. Mm? And some type of investment and done for, uh, to respect some Italian legislation. So for example, safety for workers. Um, the results, uh, no mathematics at all. The, we have mathematics, but I just go on the results. 
just to explain, uh, we try to divide the firm interview in three groups. The first group, which is cluster number one, are the group that have invested a lot on sustainability. Uh, the second group is an intermediate. The third cluster number three is the cluster of the firm that have invested less. You have the ranking of the different variables that we measure. So you see that for all the different variables, investment in communication, uh, the, the investment in differentiation strategy and in cost strategy, for example, one of the first results is that you identify firms that they don't use only one strategy. They have uh, different investment, both to differentiate, both to reduce the cost. So we have one group that uh, has invested a lot. And if you look, the, the, the last variable is the economic performance, where you can uh, uh, notice that the firm that have invested more on sustainability, uh, they have better performance, economic performance, than the other one. That in Italy, at the beginning, sustainability was considered a cost, a weight. Now we can say that after 10 years, the people that have invested more, uh, now they have better results. Um, what type of results? Mm. I have to explain uh, this. The, in the red um, color, you see the firms that have invested less. The green color, the firm that have invested more. And the blue color is the intermediate. Just to show you, do you see the, uh, the, the shape of the waves are quite the same? In the sense that the Italian firms uh, it uh, seems quite homogeneous how they behave. What they differentiate, what the group and another one, is the intensity of uh, the investment. So in, the, in terms of behavior, you know, they are quite homogeneous, but some decided to invest more, okay? So the three different clusters, uh, they don't have different strategy. They are quite the same, but some have invested, is the quantity of, uh, of money invested that they differentiate the, two, the three clusters. I give more data. So the first is that uh, the business model that we discover are quite homogeneous in the approach. But what the first are the intensity of the investment. The second is that what are the, the, these type of firms? What differentiate more cluster one from cluster three? So the cluster one was the one who are more sustainability. Look the hectares and the mean production in bottles. You can notice that larger firm are more in cluster one, so more sustainable. It doesn't mean that small firms has not invested. I just want to say that some firms that had more resources had invested more and had better results in this case. So maybe they, they reach some economies of scale that can have advantage of this investment. The second. If you see the green class in the uh, Gambero Rosso uh, premium, they have, the two, the, they have a premium for the green strategy, which is the green glasses, and the red glasses is the quality of wine. If you notice, uh, the cluster one, uh, the, they have both higher mark in the green glasses and in red glasses, which means that if you invest at the end, the certification are higher. And in terms of quality, they, ha they have more premium than other firms. So sustainability is a way how to reach good quality. And the third is the price, the mean bottle price. You notice cluster one has higher price than the other one. So w what are you know, the character of the, the firm that have invested more? F uh, firm that use sustainability to improve the quality, so the average quality is better. In terms of, of price, they, are, they work better to differentiate the product. If they have invested, maybe they, have, uh, they can tell a story uh, and they can have the revenue of this story. Remember, in 1,000 firms, only one third you know, are in this uh, area. Just to give you some data to discuss and then uh, I finish. So after, let's say, 10 years, uh, now the concept of sustainability is well-rooted uh, in the, the world of Italian wine. 
with the average uh, indicators that are quite good uh, for all the three levels. So economic sustainability, environmental sustainability, and social sustainability. Uh, so the, the, um, the, the three components of the business model are all uh, involved in this change. Uh, we analyze uh, uh, three groups of firms, so we, we, uh, we cannot say that all the Italian firms have a sustainable so approach, but you know, a large number of these, and if we consider the average mark, uh, uh, many things have been done, because the average mark is quite good. Uh, the dif what they dif differentiate is not the type of strategy, but the intensity of the investment. The variable sides can explain a little of uh, the difference, but mm, you know, uh, because our sample is done of many small firms, it means that mm, lots of these small wineries have invested. Uh, sometimes is that mm, to reach the results, maybe you need the economies of scale. And this, I think, arise some, what are the strategies of the future? Because you can have an internal growth, a dimension, or maybe you can cooperate with the other, we call a network approach, hmm? to reach some economies of scale. Uh, performance, in the past, uh, in sustainability was considered a weight, was considered a problem, a cost. Now we can say that sustainability, if you invest well, and if you are able to differentiate the product, you can have good economic performance. Uh, the variable identified as driver of value creation mm, is, is quite interesting that some of these are quite the same mm, analysis that we have seen in New Zealand, we have seen in Australia, we have seen in the uh, United States. But some indicators, some variables are quite typical of Italy. Uh, and and may, most of them are connected with the concept of biodiversity. Maybe Michele we can explain uh, better this. At strategic level, we found uh, both cost leadership strategy and differentiation strategy. So there is not a one best way to arrive to sustainability. You can move from different parts, but at the end, you can reach the same results. Uh, margin of improvement. Uh, first of all, most of these firms have work isolated. They have done this investment by themselves. Uh, we think that there is lots of space uh, for cooperation strategy. Uh, we see this uh, space of cooperation, for example, at legislation level, you know, 15 programs, at, um, for example, indicator to define common measure of uh, sustainability that you can certificate with only one level and not with different levels. For strategy, cooperation in terms, for example, uh, research and development, communication strategy, international strategy, what is the approach, how to use sustainability in, you know, worldwide could be uh, a weapon to uh, improve the export of the Italian winery. But I, I stop now because uh, we have some discussion and uh, maybe mm, Michele, you can um, stress some different things that, uh, you know, I have uh, just highlighted briefly. We will discuss about how proud I am to be here around a glass of wine later. And, but um, uh, I, I would just try to give you some pills uh, about the summar summarize what I think has happened, uh, what is behind this report and this forum. Since actually I've been always uh, during this path a bit the bridge between the academics, the political, and the business. Uh, uh, souls divisions of this uh, of this network and uh, and actually I have to thank first of all uh, Unione Italiana Vini which is the association for those who and most of you may not know is an association that is grouping s around 70 percent of Italian production okay so it's a it's a union of producers Gambero Rosso is a is an editorial uh, Italian uh, group Attilio Scienza who is another uh, founder of this uh, of this uh, forum is uh, uh, the president of the viticulture uh, uh, university of uh, of Milan and thank them mm, to to have charged me to guide this year and a half of work because this is actually what happened is that a year and a half ago uh, we were looking at the uh, Italian panorama of, uh, of uh, 
investment approach, studies, research on sustainability, and more or less, this is what we were uh, seeing. So 15 programs and already a bunch of logos. As you, no, ah, you only me you can see it. <laughs> you see in the computer, but not in the... Okay. No, oh, sorry, sorry. Okay. Anyway, we will get there. <laughs> Should I wait or? No, no, go ahead. Okay, I'll go ahead. But anyway, so, uh, and uh, uh, what we thought is that it was, uh, first of all, necessary uh, to, uh, to understand what were the common points between all these programs. So what, is there something that can group us in a movement and, uh, and, uh, and so we started by looking in each program. So a program, just to make an example, is like the California Sustainable Wine Growing. Mm -hmm. This is a sustainability program. And, uh, and, uh, and so we, we, we started by looking what was, uh, uh, what was uh, putting them, co uh, relating them into, into, technically speaking, into, for example, common indicators of sustainability. And, uh, and then we were trying to understand wineries that were participating to these programs. We have seen it, it's, uh, it's uh, quite a large number because uh, over 500 wineries we found out were already actively participating to these programs. And then we wanted to, uh, to understand, of course, uh, what was uh, the cultural environment in which these programs and these wineries were, were, uh, were moving in, in the business, in the markets to understand if this movement could be pushed to make a further step. So uh, the further step of, uh, of a cross-fertilization of uh, technical elements, business uh, approach, and uh, product cultural approach. This is uh, really the meaning of, uh, of, uh, of the path. And I think that, and I will be very uh, short in summarizing, uh, there are a lot, the war, and there are a lot of uh, common points which uh, uh, we are displaying in this uh, report. Actually, when we will uh, be back with the, with the online connection, I will show you where to look for this uh, representation because the report is available online and there is just a little website which was made precisely to, to, uh, to communicate. In the meantime, I wanna, I'll take advantage of this pause to thank also the producers. Who, there we go. Yeah. Oh. So we have four wines tonight. We have uh, Caprai from Umbria. We have uh, Guadalmelo from Bulgari, Tuscany. We have Arcipelago Muratori from Franciacorta in Northern Italy. And then we have Michele's wine from Salcheto, Tuscany. Uh, these are some of the producers who are involved in this initiative and they've offered the wine for, for the evening. I will just. This actually is the, the the creative chaos I was talking about. And, um, and so basically uh, there is, uh, and, and you will be able, and I, I, I am actually, uh, I'm actually pointing uh, this out. This is the website that was built up just to uh, represent this, uh, this work of this year and I have made by the, this forum and uh, to be uh, able also to, uh, to allow to download the report as you, can see actually, so you can, <laughs> so you can uh, you can touch it. It it's ex it, uh, it exists. And uh, and by the way, my suggestion: there are about ten pages because it's about one hundred. The first ten summarizes uh, uh, the old path. So just to to to, <laughs> to underline, so it it's accessible. It's uh, approachable, and uh, and uh, well, uh, the common points. I think that. Uh, um, of the, the programs, the company uh, investment and business activities are uh, mainly uh, represented by a, a multi-parameter uh, approach. So just as in the most modern approaches to, su to sustainability and especially to environmental sustainability in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in production, we, you have a, a multi-parameter approach. In this case, the, we have selected three macro indicators which even by the most uh, affirmed LCA uh, uh, studying uh, academics uh, are uh, a complete uh, 
var variety of parameters uh, enough uh, to be able to, to measure uh, environmental sustainability, which, as uh, Lorenzo was mentioning, are represented by GHG, so basically the carbon footprint approach or the measurement of uh, emissions uh, uh, related to the production which have uh, influence over climate. Uh, a macro indicator named water, so basically uh, all uh, the, uh, the process of managing water, so in the sense of uh, rational use of water as a, as a resource, but also the uh, dangers and the, uh, of uh, water pollutions uh, along the process. So this is uh, the second uh, macro indicator. And the third uh, is, uh, is uh, this, uh, what we call biodiversity, because it's actually a, uh, an indicator which uh, represents quality quantity of biodiversity inside the ecosystem managed by the firm, uh, uh, by the winery, uh, at the winery level in this case. So this is uh, one important element that puts everything in a multi-parameter. Uh, 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 and what is really interesting to underline is that it's uh, an approach that is based on measurement of the result. So we're moving from a best practice uh, checklist, which is important. It, it was probably the first step that was made by any movement, any program. So, so to line up uh, the best practices and to, and to start by uh, selecting them and to, and to measure the quality of uh, the, the sustainability approach of a firm by uh, looking at this, the respect of this checklist here. We're talking about indicators that are uh, allowing us to measure the result of our action toward the different uh, uh, issues that uh, our uh, the different goals. So, and the, the biodiversity is a, a very good example of uh, of this uh, approach, and it gives us really the the idea. It, it makes us, I think, touch the the, the uh, in some way the approach because uh, when we talk about uh, uh, biodiversity things, we're, we're, we're thinking, for example, when we talk about, when we talk about soil, to uh, an index that uh, uh, will uh, allow us to, uh, in a combined way, measure the quality of quantity of uh, the life which is under our soil, and uh, to uh, then display uh, to us uh, uh, the uh, rating of our behavior toward life. Uh, so everything that we do, which can be related to uh, you know, how many times we pet with it, we, we, we go with a, tr a tractor through our, our vine, and so our mechanic collection, or uh, what we spray over this uh, field, or uh, what kind of uh, fertilizer do we use, what is the effect pro or against life? And this is not just something that is, uh, is an ideology. It has uh, specific uh, consequences to our productivity, uh, toward uh, the long-term, uh, um, uh, I would say, capacity of our field to be uh, to be fertile and to be hand to be able to to maintain uh, a balanced viticulture, and also uh, the capacity of this field to fight against uh, soil erosion. So, uh, long-term uh, issue that we are having uh, worldwide. So. And so in general, this is really uh, the very, um, it's one of the very important uh, elements of our approach. So uh, a real uh, um, cause-effect approach. So uh, we, um, we bring the tool, but it's the tool of measurement, which is a tool that, is, uh, that has already uh, proved uh, its capacity to, to be cause-effect. So we have, uh, we do things that uh, have uh, an effect uh, over our, our biodiversity in uh, our ecosystem. So this is um, basically one very important part. Another thing that was unifying the, the approach is the third party verification. So basically we believe in this movement that uh, the approach to analysis and management of uh, the different parameters uh, require uh, kind of uh, quality management process, you know, the typical uh, quality uh, company uh, management process, like the ISO standards or BSA or whatever you can uh, relate to, that uh, uh, are uh, then offering the possibility to have uh, a third uh, independent body to verify that uh, we are correctly managing the parameter and correctly displaying our rating. This is also another important part. And so, 
this is, uh, uh, this is, I think, in Peel's uh, uh, and in what was uh, really uh, putting all uh, this movement together. And uh, um, uh, actually, uh, the f now we are here to propose, the, the, the forum and, and this report, to propose uh, uh, the final part, I would say, of this, of this path to uh, enable a cultural growth. Because we have the technical tools for management, we have uh, uh, the managerial approach, uh, we now are able to, um, um, to do two very important steps, uh, which are a political one. So uh, we are actually, uh, our goal, we announced it in the report and, uh, and in Rome uh, two weeks ago, is to now have a, a written and uh, guideline that will uh, complete the, uh, for f and, 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 and also allow every program to relate to one specific rule, which will in some way, and this is the, the strong proposal that we're gonna make uh, at uh, Milano Expo 2015 next May, which will be one rule to express sustainable wine in some way. It's uh, something that uh, we are ready to, 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 to accomplish, is to propose a guideline which uh, will require certainly a complete approach, multi-parameter, with the different uh, macro indicators, uh, with uh, the uh, third-party verification, and this will be one. It's, it's, it's a step that uh, we are allowed to, to, to do j because we have done this uh, first, uh, uh, first, uh, uh, first work around the, the forum and the report and the different instances of the, of the different stakeholders. And the, 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 the second one, which is probably more important, is this cross-fertilization I was mentioning. So we, uh, we need to, uh, now that we have uh, in some way a, a technical tool and, and, a, and a long term target in, in, on how to manage and to use uh, uh, our investments, our sustainability in a clear way, because now we have the tool to, to, to measure it and to express it, now we can bring this into the product and bring this into our uh, product storytelling, because this is, uh, we, we have seen and we have uh, actually, there are a lot of services that have displayed the, this problem. Uh, we uh, couldn't uh, really accomplish uh, the, uh, we couldn't complete our product and production with the, with, with a, a real sustainable, uh, how can I say, representation, because we didn't know how to, for example, again, uh, measure and express it in, uh, in uh, transparent and uh, reliable uh, uh, tools. And on the other hand, we couldn't start to speak with uh, consumers about what this representation would be. There was, uh, the chaos was not allowing us to, for example, uh, say that uh, our um, non-mechanical approach to cultivation is good for biodiversity. How could we? Uh, talk about this uh, in, in the market or relate this uh, in our storytelling or uh, in the storytelling of our products without a, a, a clear and complete frame. This is, I think, the, the, the other important element that now we are allowed to do, is the, the cultural cross-fertilization in the, in the market. Thank you. One important element that I'd like to underline, this is the first experiment in Europe of this kind of initiative that puts together universities and the private sector. Uh, there's gonna be other similar experiments in other countries, and the, the idea is that uh, they will be able to develop European standards based on this research. So this is a first step for a very large process, and I think over the, time, over the years this will become very, impactful also on the U.S. market as European wines will uh, cross over the Atlantic. Uh, now we'll move from the Italian side to the American side, and I would like to ask uh, Bruce first about his experience as a producer, but also what he's doing now uh, f for Gotham Project. We've talked a lot about production in this first part of, of the evening, but now we're gonna talk about distribution and then I'll ask also Tyler to talk more about you know, perceptions, consumers, and what's the overall uh, idea about sustainability here in the US. Uh, Bruce, can you tell us more about what you do and sure. your experience? Thank you. Um, 
I wanted to tell you a little bit about the Gotham Project, which is a business I started four years ago with uh, Charles Beeler as my business partner. He's been very innovative in wine packaging in the United States. And he called me up one day and said, what do you think about putting wine in kegs? And uh, I sort of paused and said, well, yeah, well, what do you have in mind? And he asked me if uh, I could source some, some good Finger Lakes Riesling. Uh, I've been producing wine in New York State for 20 years now uh, and made a few calls to some friends up in the Finger Lakes. This was right after the 2009 vintage. And we put together a small lot of Finger Lakes Riesling. And uh, it was the equivalent of about six or 700 cases of wine, or in the case of the kegs, which we package our wines in, it was about 300 uh, 19.5 liter kegs. So wine on tap is really nothing new. It's actually an, an old idea. Um, if you look at wine regions around the world, uh, you know, you could go into a local pub, bistro, whatever the, you know, the local kind of hangout was and you went for a glass of wine, uh, they might offer you a glass of wine from a barrel or in the last 30, 40 years in many places uh, on draft. And, and basically this is utilizing uh, a basic beer uh, draft system. And the, the core benefit of wine on tap or putting a wine in a keg for me is it takes care of the, the freshness issue. Uh, I think we've all had the experience where we've gone into a restaurant and have had a glass of wine. And if it's a glass, it's a wine you know, you might say, well, this, you know, this wine is not exactly what I know it to be. Or uh, this wine's OK. Or oftentimes, this wine is really not very good. And, and in many cases, uh, that has to do with the, the way the wine has been preserved or not preserved. If you happen to get uh, you know, a first, second, third glass of the night from a bottle that was open yesterday, uh, that wine is going to be compromised in, in some way. So uh, by using the draft system and by uh, dispensing the wine using an inert gas like nitrogen or argon, which is really the same thing we would do in a winery uh, if we had a tank with a little bit of head space and we wanted to protect the wine, you are ensuring that there's consistency for each glass that's dispensed. Uh, so the first glass and the last glass taste the same. Uh, and, and that's really where we, we came at this from when we, we first started with the project. We started with a handful of restaurants here in New York City. Uh, really didn't know what to expect uh, with this beta test. Uh, Terroir Wine Bar in Tribeca, when they opened, opened with our Finger Lakes Riesling on tap. And uh, there were a few other places. And the reception to it was really strong. And um, we really couldn't anticipate uh, what the reception would be like. I think we thought that there would be more consumer uh, resistance or, uh, I guess, skepticism about wine coming out of a, a tap, the perception of it. But I think following on the heels of screw tops being well accepted in the United States, we found that there really was very broad acceptance of this new means of delivering uh, wine. And over the last four years, we've really expanded this beyond just the wines we make in, in the Finger Lakes. We're also working with friends around the world and bringing in wines in, in bulk format to our production facility, uh, which is just a few miles from the port of New York, New Jersey, and in, in Newark, uh, uh, Elizabeth, and, and we uh, are able to bring over twice as much wine in, in bulk in a container as you would be able to do if the wine was in glass. So it's, it's lower weight, uh, lower carbon footprint, more, more efficient. The other thing that we, we learned about it is, and, and we're talking about wines here that are, um, you know, wines that are meant to be consumed within a couple of years of, of the vintage. These are not wines. Uh, that are meant for long-term aging. They're wines that are really uh, very pleasant for their, their vibrancy and freshness and sort of youthful characteristics of the wine. And one thing we found out is that by transporting wine in, in these larger um, volumes, we were able to really 
protect the wine and retain more of the maybe delicate aromas and and you know just the quality of the wine and as soon as the wine is is received here locally we we go into stainless steel tanks and then we're doing all of the the kegging and packaging here locally so what that means from an environmental perspective is that we are reusing the packaging. So one 19.5 liter stainless steel keg is the equivalent of 26 bottles of wine. And in this country, uh, more than on only 30% of, of all the glass in this country is recycled today. That means 70% of it's ending up in landfill. So for each of these kegs, which have a 20, 30, you know, year plus uh, life expectancy, each one of those kegs eliminates 3,000 glass bottles from, from the waste stream over the course of its life. Uh, and each time it's going out there, obviously, 26 bottles. So over the past four years, we've been able to eliminate more than uh, a million bottles from the waste stream. Uh, and that's just, you know, one producer. Um, and there are, you know, many more um, companies, you know, getting involved with this. I think at first people looked at it and they thought it was a, a fad or, oh, you know, this is kind of a neat way to dispense wine. But uh, as I think, you know, we, we, uh, we talked a little bit before the panel discussion, there has to be uh, more than just the environmental benefit to what we're doing, meaning these are products that, that should be delicious. Uh, we're, we're trying to meet a consumer uh, demand. And if we can do that in a way that's environmentally responsible, and also in this case, uh, cost savings, because when it comes to uh, packaging, every bottle, uh, you know, capsule, whether it's screw cap, cork, foil, label, the carton that goes with it, you're looking at two to three dollars a bottle, uh, at least two dollars in, in packaging. And by the time that gets to uh, the end consumer, that's, that's multiplied. So using a reusable package, we're able to pull some of those costs out of the equation uh, and offer what we call you know, a better glass of wine um, from, from several uh, points of view. Um, so just just wanted to give uh, a little bit of that's that's one uh, I guess example just from a packaging uh, mm -hmm. perspective in particular. Thank you, uh, Tyler. Your point of view on the whole sustainability issue: How is sustainability received here, and what do you think about that? Okay, yeah, great. The Thanks. Topic. It's great to be here, and uh, thank you. Uh, for the hearing these other presentations is very, very interesting. So, um, you know, I actually have some exclusive video footage. I don't have a PowerPoint slideshow for you. I have some video footage, unfortunately, uh, didn't arrive. So I'm gonna have to just walk you through this. But imagine that we have a camera, a hidden camera in the wine aisle, and you've got the first consumer coming down the aisle. And the, she says, hey, um, I'm having chicken tonight this wine looks like it'll go with chicken. Okay, then our camera picks up another person and he's coming down the aisle and he says, oh, this wine has a great label. It totally cracks me up. I think I'm gonna put this in my basket. Okay, and then there's a third person coming down the aisle and, uh, and she says, uh, oh, I had this wine once before. It's really great. Uh, let's, let's get this one, you know? And so there are a variety of reasons that a consumer wants to buy a specific wine and pick a wine off the shelf. I mean, over half of the wine sold in America uh, today is sold through supermarkets. And so um, you don't have a lot of time to make a decision, a purchasing decision. Um, and often they're influenced by things sort of at the point of sale that uh, 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 may or may not have to do with uh, the wine itself, the wine quality itself. Um, so do, Get, tying this into cons to sustainability, does is there a consumer who walks down the aisle and says, "Hey, I really want a sustainable wine"? Maybe somewhere, yeah. But uh, I think that there are a lot of other considerations that consumers have before that. For example, organic consumers are much more uh, familiar with the language of organic uh, uh, going to farmers markets or or perhaps even local wines. Uh, local local uh, is certainly a big. Um, 
uh, thing in the food world right now. And so, but with organic, we have a, uh, there are standards for organic wines, but they're very confusing and they don't lead to clear labeling on wines. And in fact, uh, the, uh, uh, without getting too technical, the, to call a wine an organic wine on a label is so hard for a producer to achieve because of uh, uh, a ruling on uh, added sulfites that there are just maybe a handful of wineries that actually make wines that would qualify for that term. So as a result, a lot of wines actually then, if they want to tout organically grown grapes, they have to say wine made from organically grown grapes, which is a weaker, much weaker standard because organic wine has to be 95% true. But um, wine made from organically grown grapes has to be only 75% true. So as Stephen Colbert would say, there's a little truthiness there. <laughs> so, um, but, uh, uh, you know, certainly there are going to be producers who make 100% uh, uh, wine from 100% organically grown grapes and put it on the label. But uh, the, the standard, though, is only that it has to be 75 to be in compliance with the, with the uh, labeling regulations. So... Um, it is, con it is confusing, and so a lot of uh, producers feel that they like organic. Uh, organic, I should say, is a stricter uh, form of regulation. It is third-party verified. It has a three-year phase-in period, so you have to be organic, have an organic vineyard for three years before you can put uh, uh, organic wine, uh, anything, have, have it be certified organic uh, uh, vineyard practices. And so... Um, uh, so it is, it is uh, among many other things, uh, and so it is, but it is quite stringent and, and quite uh, uh, rigorous. But unfortunately, it's not something that people, that wineries can put on labels uh, very easily in the United States. So as a result, um, there are other terms that are less uh, uh, tightly regulated that do appear on labels. But, um, but generally, I would submit to you that it's a relatively small subset of consumers that um, is actually goes to a wine store looking for that, with as that as the uh, defining characteristic of, of their, their search for, for a, uh, uh, some libation that evening. Um, so, um, so yeah, but consumers do certainly care. I'm not trying to belittle it, but I think that consumers because I've seen uh, survey data that show that 80% of consumers actually care a great deal or uh, somewhat uh, uh, in sustainable, uh, sustainability of the winemaking uh, practices for the wines that they choose. But they also care about a lot of other things. They care about whether it's uh, local or family-owned. They care about the carbon footprint. And so it's just a question of how much each of these plays, uh, what role it play, they play in the buying decision uh, ultimately. But, I, but consumers do have a very favorable view of the wine industry. We've all seen uh, pictures in uh, glossy magazines of rolling hills in Tuscany, for example, mm -hmm. and it's very beautiful, and everyone has uh, uh, a very, uh, quite a favorable view of the wine industry, and they think that it is very sustainable. Uh, and so, and so uh, I think that it is sort of taken for granted. So that said, organizing and having standards for what sustainability is and encouraging laggards in an industry to, to actually toe the line is, is a good thing. Uh, uh, and as, uh, uh, as we said earlier, um, we, there, there is an economic incentive to do so uh, because sustainable wines not only ref show higher quality uh, in your analysis, but also fetched higher prices. Uh, but I think that's a natural follow on um, uh, because if you're, if you're caring more about the vineyard, you're much more likely to make uh, a better wine. I do want to just say one thing about uh, uh, the carbon footprint of wine or greenhouse gas emissions, uh, since it's a subject that's sort of near and dear to my heart. And a few years ago, I co-authored a paper on uh, uh, the greenhouse gas emissions, carbon footprint of wine, and uh, uh, this was in 2007. And so it gained a lot of uh, interest and in, in following. And we, um, in part because the uh, results were somewhat uh, counterintuitive. Uh, we found that a bottle of Bordeaux had a smaller carbon footprint, uh, 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 lower greenhouse gas emissions uh, coming to a consumer in New York than a bottle of, say, Napa wine did, uh, and so or wine coming from California. So it uh, 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 it was it, it raised some eyebrows, but I think it did. 
put a little bit of a, I mean, at that point, I should say, um, there was a lot of interest in, in greenhouse gas emissions and carbon footprint uh, per se, uh, uh, but I did raise some eyebrows. Uh, and um, I'm really pleased that uh, Bruce and Charles have had such success with this program, with this uh, Gotham project. And uh, I've tasted the wines. I've tasted the first vintage you were talking about in 2009. And it's really good and really fresh. And so I just really hope that, uh, that, the, that I, think, I think that they, they, they demonstrate a path that, that you can take where you don't have to necessarily tout the sustainability on the label, but it's, it's, it's emblematic uh, in the packaging system. And, it's, 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 and the quality is obvious in the glass, too. So, so that's a great way to, to do it. So Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. So we, the presentations went a little longer. Maybe I would like to open it to questions to the public, to any of our speakers. Uh, we have two microphones. Please make sure to speak in the microphone because we're recording the event and we want the people at home to be able to, to hear the questions. So we have already one question over there. Oh. Hi. Um, I'm in the environmental policy program at the New School, and one thing we learned about was biodynamic wines, and we were trying to find some in stores, and found it was very difficult. Where does, where do you see biodynamic wines in the grand scheme of sustainability in wine? Hmm. Who wants to answer this? Um, biodynamics, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, is a. Uh, a practice, a vineyard practice, and also some cellar practices for um, uh, making wines in, in a, um, a way that, that prioritizes the farm as a self-sustaining entity. And, um, and they, with that, in part of that, they, they try to time uh, some of their practices that they, some of the things they do in the winery and the, in the vineyard uh, with, you know, uh, a certain lunar timetable and, um, and also have some other uh, practices that, uh, you know, may or may not be endorsed by uh, uh, more conservative, um, uh, traditional, uh, uh, you know, chemical wielding, shall we say, uh, 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 vineyard workers or vineyard managers. So, um, uh, it's, uh, uh, but yeah, is it? It's very. It is growing in popularity, definitely, uh, in um, quality among quality winemakers. But I guess. Um, you know, the, the question is, how much do the quality winemakers promote that? Uh, and the, some of them do put it on their labels, definitely. And there's a, it's actually a copyright, uh, certified uh, a copyright that, that, that um, they share. The Demeter, is, Demeter USA is the authorizing body in the United States. And there are other um, authorizing bodies in Europe. And so you have to meet, you know, there's a list of protocols that you have to meet uh, to get, to be able to call your wine biodynamic. But how much do they want to tout that? And so uh, for some producers, it's a, reg it's a question of cost and regulation. And so maybe they don't subscribe entirely uh, because of the cost and the filing uh, uh, the time uh, constraints. But, um, but others do subscribe. So, but for example, I mean, uh, a lot of them just don't like to necessarily talk about uh, vineyard practices. Uh, they want to talk about the wine quality first. And so I was interviewing a leading uh, producer of Burgundy uh, just a couple weeks ago, and at the very end he said, "Oh yes, you know we're biodynamic, uh, you know, but I don't put it on my business card." And so for him, it's just um, you know, for a lot of the producers, it's more sort of voce. And some producers in you know California have told me that it's also competitive pressures too. That that uh, at the high end, they don't want to let their competitors get an edge. And so if somebody is biodynamic then they will also uh, adopt some biodynamic practices, maybe not go all the way to certification. Um, but then, uh, but so there is sort of a competitive pressure too. But again, then a lot of top producers don't necessarily want to talk about that front and center. Uh, it'll vary. But yeah, there are a lot of stores that, where you can get that. Uh, uh, Chamber Street Wines, for example, has a lot of biodynamic wines. Um, there's a, a Whole Foods now on uh, the Upper West Side that has, uh, and they screen a lot of their wines for natural sustainability and uh, uh, other shades of green. Can I, can I just add one thing? Because it's, uh, I think it's interesting the organic and biodynamic uh, uh, in the in the table in the discussion. Because uh, um, organic, as you as you were mentioning, is uh, is a structured protocol with rules and third party verification. Uh, and but uh, in the picture of sustainability is uh, 
just part, one part of the picture, is, a, is one element. In fact, uh, it was uh, especially organic, which was born organic uh, cultiv or, or, or organic practices started to, to, to raise in the 70s, and they were in some way based on, uh, on a list of best practices, which were mainly based uh, on, uh, uh, let's say, uh, refusing any chemical, uh, chemical was considered any uh, industrialized product uh, coming out of chemical synthesis uh, process in the cultivation process. Th it was simple, and it's still like this today. So it's no, no of these, none of these products in our process. So uh, basically, there is uh, uh, what the picture that we are talking about uh, in this new movement, and I, uh, I say it is a picture that will hopefully also be a tool for organic cultivation and biodynamic cultivation, which is, an, which is a different point of view. The, there is a, a, a lot more, but a lot, uh, but a lot less in terms of, uh, of uh, let's say, uh, objective practices. You know, biodynamics is more the anthroposophical approach uh, is uh, something that is, uh, is, uh, is less Touchable, but uh, very interesting. I practice also, by the way. But uh, the the. <laughs> See, we but, only find that out now, you know. Yeah, but I, but like, the point is, but it's another story. Yeah, yeah. In fact, what we're talking about, in fact, the the sustainability approach that we are proposing, for example, in our movement, is uh, a tool that could help very much, especially organic uh, producer or biodynamic, to really measure their uh, environmental sustainability, for instance. Because uh, so far, we had no instruments to really measure the sustainability. And probably a lot of organic winemakers or biodynamic ones were not necessarily doing the best choices for the general picture, energy, water, biodiversity, even though they, were, they had the greatest intention since the beginning. So, uh, so uh, let, let, I wanted to underline, because this is very important, is that the organic and biodynamic has been a great start and is still a very interesting approach. We are organic certified too, by the way, so <laughs> just to underline. But it's, it's, uh, uh, it's not the big picture. There it is. Next question. And then we have the lady. Now I'm going to ask about uh, the, the microphone, I'm sorry. Good evening. I was going to ask about biodynamics as well. And when you were talking about sustainability, I mean, Steiner did all kinds of studies about farming 100 years ago, the idea being to create a sustainable environment where, the vin where there's less vineyard intervention. I mean, as a biodynamic farmer, you know this as well. It, it, the idea is to, to create the environment where the vineyard becomes self-sustaining naturally and with as little intervention at all, whereas organics it's the same kind of treatment of the vines. It's just a question of what you use to treat them, where it doesn't philosophically change your whole approach and bring about a lifestyle and a, a difference in the way that biodynamics does. And I'm just wondering, since the goal of that, when he set it up 100 years ago, was sustainability, why it took till the question portion of this evening for you guys to even begin to discuss the effect of biodynamics and how you want to be working with or without that, that's all. Should I? <laughs> well, the, the, the problem is uh, to r really set up the question, to, the question should be more wider because the, uh, the social question is, should we have uh, industrial production of wine or not? Should we have then billions of bottles of wine produced or not? I think we should, because we have billions of consumers. So uh, first of all, so since we have to have this industrial production, do we have a social issue in caring about our environment and about the ecosystem and the biodiversity? And so my, my answer is yes, we should. So we are here. To make uh, uh, to to I mean my, my effort and the effort of many people like uh, like me is to try to propose models that are more compelling both with the social uh, uh, top issues 
then with the need to make, uh, of course, uh, quality products and to make uh, positive businesses. So I think this is uh, the, the real question. Now, uh, Steiner, he didn't even uh, think that alcohol was part of his picture. So, you know, it's another question in the question. <laughs> Should we talk about wine and biodi biodynamics in an anthroposophical uh, way? I don't know. So it, the questions become too big for me, <laughs> or at least for the time that I have today. But I would love to talk about it, uh, as you can imagine. But uh, uh, the, um, I, I had something else uh, to, to, to close with. But what, what I think, what I like to underline, I, don't, I, I, I know I'm going out of your question, but I, uh, I have to say this, that what I see in the sustainability, what I like at least in this, uh, in this vision of sustainability, is that it can contain also biodynamic and the biodynamic approach because there is an approach in which you you are looking for a kind of, for a great harmony with uh, the ecosystem you are dealing with in which you are there is space for a self, for a vineyard that uh, is self sustained if if this was your 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 point in the sense that uh, it needs less to be sustained less as possible so in which you are looking for to understand technically, to use innovation, because this is a nice part of this, you're using technology to try to uh, understand how to help your vineyard be stronger over time and to, and to need less mechanical in, uh, uh, intervention or uh, chemical or whatever you, are, uh, you were using before. So there is a, it, it, uh, it, it, it can survive together. And in, in some way, I think that this, um, Sustainability, which actually we were talking about, we were in Merano Wine Festival Friday with the forum, and we were actually uh, we moderated uh, one day of conferences around uh, a side topic, but it's another uh, thing that we are trying to 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 promote uh, uh, communication between our instances of the forum and the production side with distribution and marketing, and uh, uh, in some way. Something that, uh, the two things came out uh, very interesting that uh, also represent uh, this movement is that we are, on the one hand, we're trying to take out the best of uh, uh, investment uh, uh, processes, uh, uh, approach to product, for example, I mean transparency in, uh, in, uh, in wines or no sulfite wines, they all fit in to try to uh, make uh, uh, our uh, production approach socially, economically, so profitable business, uh, and environmentally efficient. And, I, and, the, and the good th thing is that there are, there are a lot of things, a lot of uh, uh, improvement that wineries can do today uh, to make their business, a lot of actions that can make their business more profitable, Socially, because it's, an, it's, a, it's a matter of values, of ethical, uh, more efficient and, uh, and environmentally, environmentally so. So in this sense, it's an inclusive uh, process. And on the other hand, it, 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 I love what, what Bruce was saying. It, uh, there is a great story to tell. So now, because it's always a matter of, because we're not here to talk about a product that needs to be bought because it's sustainable. I agree with you. This is not the point. We are, uh, we are here to say our great quality wine, which is a story, because we, uh, I always like to say taste is an illusion. We have, created, uh, we have created taste by talking about territories and varietals sometimes, a label design, uh, uh, a flavor, whatever. But it was, it's a story. But in, 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 uh, and we're not aiming to just make the story completely different. We are aiming to, to make the story even better. And that's what you both were saying. Yeah. Thank you. We had somebody there. Hi, my name is Danielle, and I'm with the Italian importer Gustiamo here in New York City. And my question is actually for Professor Zanni. I was curious about the question of uh, biodiversity. You mentioned that it's a very important part of um, sustainable wineries. And I was curious how they are achieving biodiversity and how it's changing between the regions in Italy. OK. It, it, 
you know, the, the, the concept of biodiversity could have d different meanings. Mm? And um, uh, if you see that the rating, you know, is not exactly the first, but there are different answers that are related to this. I think one of the main character of, of Italy is, is the, the attitude to defend the typicity of the product of single area, uh, which is a good thing and even a bad thing in the sense that we have so many products, so many stories to tell, and sometimes it's too complicated to tell all these different stories. Mm? That's why the forum is a way how to simplify the message. Mm? Uh, the other thing uh, was we have done an analysis of what the firm has done. We haven't done an analysis of what of these variables are really important for the consumer, in the sense that if the territory matters, if the landscape it matters, uh, you invest in different things, but maybe some are very important. Uh, I don't have you know, uh, the st statistic of, of, on what the consumer are doing, but I have done an analysis at international level on consumer behavior, which is linked to the internationalization. Let's say, is it possible to use sustainability for international marketing strategy? And I say, I think yes, but uh, it's a story that we have to write in the sense that mm, I was uh, measuring the value of the brand Chianti and Brunello for uh, a sample of uh, 5,000 uh, consumer distributed in United States, Canada, Germany, and um, uh, uh, and United States. Okay, uh, and we asked them you know, if they recognize the territory, and obviously they recognize. And we ask. Uh, if you, uh, how much mm, you can give for premium price? And what we notice, people who came to Italy, who visited, and not only tasted the product, but visited, and they see not only the Cyprus, but they see the territory, they understand better, and there is a, a strong cor cor positive correlation between premium price and how to visit. So this is tourism, I know, but if you, understand the product, and if you have a very uh, simple idea, maybe you can communicate biodiversity. Then there is another problem is that if you have so many stories, not all the territory are able to tell, you know, to explain this. And when we are speaking about Tuscany, maybe Tuscany has found a solution. Hmm? And maybe uh, Puglia now is, is doing to do this. But when you said, what are the variable? I think biodiversity, you know, uh, is a complex uh, is a complex topic, but is could be linked to a, a good international marketing, which could be different from the Italian approach from the other one, because I don't think there are other territories that could tell this story very well. All right, I think it's 7:30, so we would like to take some time to enjoy the reception. Of course, the speakers will be here, and we can continue the conversation. Thank you so much to all the speakers. It was very interesting. And you're welcome to taste the wines, and there will be also some food served. Thank you for coming.